earlier on, you you again, uh, you know, you talked about uh, how you thought uh, Kenneth Miller was um, strawmanning a lot of Behe's arguments, but all through your explanations, I hear you talking about uh, you know the u making the usual. Uh, creationist errors, where you talk about, well, if it, it, it's either just by chance or it has a purpose. But of course, anyone who studied evolution uh, knows it, it's not a pure chance process. You know, there is nothing simply random uh, and, and simply chancy about natural selection or punctuated equi equilibrium or any of the various theories of evolutionary processes that are out there. Evolution isn't simply, it, it's not a, this false dichotomy between chance or intent. Yeah, it's not and, taking and all the parts of a motor and throwing yeah. them in a pile and seeing if they if they mm -hmm. uh, produce something. That's not the way evolution works. So when you misrepresent this as either it's chance or it was intelligently designed, you are poisoning the well so that your argument looks more appealing. That's a straw man that you're attacking as soon as you start talking about chance. Okay, let me let me respond to both points. First about the uh, falsifiability of intelligent design, and then I'll respond to the uh, the word randomness, then, which is essentially what you're getting at. As, as for uh, Matt, I think that was a great analogy, and I agree with you completely about how you would uh, recognize that the uh, that the bracelet is designed and everything. But if you go and you take the flagellum, which has been accepted by many, many biologists to literally be a motor, function as a motor, any single motor I've ever seen, is the product of intelligence. No, so when you go, or no. When you find a more sophisticated motor, well, we're back to why, is it, why is it preposterous to go and say it might be from a designer? Well, because we have evidence that it occurs naturally. What what evidence do we have of a motor ever appearing naturally? That's see, that's what I'm not understanding. Because any motor, uh, first I mean, of all, motor, first of all, that I've seen come from some kind of design. First of all, you've already given the exam example, and that's the bacterial flagellum. Now, second of all, you're making the same equivocation fallacy problem that we had three weeks ago when I was in the show, where the guy called in to talk about DNA as a code, and I tried to say, ex explain how he was he was confusing himself. When we make when we we say that some things are, uh, you know, that DNA is a code, yes, in many respects it is, but that is that is an analogy, and it is improper to imply that it is a code in the common sense of the word, where a code is to convey inform intelligent information from one intelligence to another. DNA does not do that. DNA is an entirely mechanical, chemical process. It's not conveying information from an intelligence to an intelligence. So it is a code by analogy. In the sense of the bacterial flagellum, when we call it a motor, we are saying it operates as a motor. That, that is a description of, of what it does just as my arm is a fulcrum. Okay, so what? Yeah, I, my eye is a camera. It operates right. as a motor. So what I'm saying is why can't, I mean, we're using, we're, we're using mechanical terms. We're using the terms that we use to describe machines to describe the thing. So why can't we take that extra step and say, well, maybe it's not just an appearance of design, as somebody like Richard Dawkins would like to say, or maybe it really is designed. I mean, because I mean, you can't saying, make that, you can't make that huge leap. It's like Mark was just yeah. saying, we could say that my eye is a camera. But now we have an example of man-made cameras and cameras that occur naturally. You can't make the leap to say that because it has a function, because it might I mean, yeah. probably have been designed and not just have the appearance of design, and therefore we're justified in believing there's an intelligent designer. Yeah. There's a huge gap there that you have not crossed with anything more than this is what I want to believe. Yeah, I mean, the, the no, simple well, that, similarity. No, that's not true, Matt. The, 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 what did, what that, did you cross not, it with? That's all we want to believe. That's not the criteria. What did you cross that use. gap with? The simple similarity in function between uh, something in nature and something that is an artifact, a man-made artifact, is not in and of itself evidence or even an argument that the thing that occurs in nature therefore must have been designed and intentionally constructed just like the artifact was. I mean, if the only ponds you had ever come across were ones that had been designed by landscapers, when you came across a pond that wasn't designed by a landscaper, you might be inclined to think that it was designed by a landscaper, and you'd be wrong. And that's the difference between deductive reasoning and inductive reasoning. So if you think you crossed that gap with more than this is what I want to believe, what did you cross the gap from there's an appearance of design to therefore it was intelligently designed? Where's the gap crosser? Okay, uh, two points, actually. One I'm not saying absolutely 100% we know for a fact that it's designed. I mean, no scientist would say 100%, they're 100% sure, really, about really any theory. 100% certain. I, did did I say. Probably. 
Did I say 100% certain at any time? I don't even recall the last show where I said that because I reject absolute certainty across the board. You don't need to tell me about that. You need to answer the question. Well, you said to me, uh, how do we make that leap from it appears to be designed that we know it was designed. So I'm saying we don't know for 100%. But I never said 100%, so skip it and get to the answer. Okay. Besides having the appearance of design, besides really, besides really being a motor or, or functioning as a motor, if it's irreducibly complex, if it contains complex specified information, and it, and it resembles things that we normally say are designed. So well, we know it's not irreducibly function, complex why can't because. can we say that it might be designed? I mean, I'm giving you several criteria on here to evaluate. Well, again, because, again, from, from the very basic uh, level of its, its premise to begin with, we know that Behe's idea of irreducible complexity isn't valid because we can take that little uh, flagellum motor apart. We can, you know, where Behe says, if you take one thing apart, none of it works. Right? As a flagellum. But you can, as a flagellum. But it's something, no, but see, that's, that's, the, that's the false criteria. Uh, that's the criteria. false premise that is defining intelligent design into existence. Right. I reject his definition as useless. It, it doesn't even, does it have any predictive value? Does it have any predict? Well, you can predict what systems would be irreducibly complex. And how? The way you test how? That is how? How do, how do you predict it? Yeah, I mean, how, before something is supposedly irreducibly complex, if all of its individual parts can't do anything because they haven't yet formed... Can't do the same job. Can't, because they haven't yet formed the irreducibly complex thing that doesn't exist yet, how do you propose to look at all of these individual elements and, say, and predict that together they would form an irreducibly complex deal? How do you, how do you, how do you have that predictive... Well, the way you falsify or well, you have to take the complete system and then try to take out a part. And the idea is, if it can yeah, but, it, but if that if that complete system doesn't exist, how how see from an evolutionary standpoint, right? Yeah, you you could have you could say, in order in order to get this kind of organism or this kind of system. Uh, to work in a certain way, we would need to see these kinds of processes, these earlier stages, as it were, just like rough drafts leading up to the final draft. We we would have to see a record of this, and and you, and if you look, uh, you know, from from the evolutionary premise, you can take the irreducibly complex, allegedly irreducibly complex uh, flagellum tail, take out bits of its motor, and see, okay, before these things were the things that are making a tail motor, they did other things, they had other functions. And we see how they developed to, to, to get to from where they were then to what they are now. At, if you take intelligent design as your premise, well, then how do you say, well, at, at, at what point did, did the designer take this little gizmo that did a thing and pop it into some other thing and make it this new thing that is irreducibly complex? Where do you see that? I mean, in the whole developmental process of this organism, I mean, this to is where you can to where you can now identify and say there is the scientific evidence of an intelligent designer at hand. And once it was like this, and now it's like this, and there is a specific thing we can point to, which is the intervention of, of an intelligent agency, and can be no other thing. And this is this is probably not morphologically accurate, but take the human nose for example. Really, really, it's fairly simple. Um, Right now, I smell with mine. I can also breathe with it, but generally, I smell with it because I could breathe with my mouth if I was, you know, in Virginia. Um, but Zing. once upon a time, that nose might have had a different function where smell wasn't part of it. So what it seems to me is that now we have a good understanding of this and, and its, its various functions, but it seems to me that B's definition says, if I take a part away and it no longer has the same function, aha, it's irreducibly complex. The content of this video is produced by the Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. If you enjoyed this content and are willing and able to provide a donation, please visit the website below.